What's going on guys, welcome back to the N3K channel. Today we're going to be having a look at the Tiny Unity package, something that just got released recently, it's a preview package, but it's quite cool and we're going to be having a good look at it today. If you're unaware, the Tiny Unity package is actually designed for messaging apps at first, and then it's going to move on to WebGL and eventually mobile games. So we're looking at stuff like Facebook Messenger, WeChat, WebGL, and applications like this. So the goal of Tiny Unity is to actually create very, very small runtime size. So we have a very fast loading time for these games and we also have very, very small uh, executable file, you could say. Now, before we go any further, just note that Tiny Unity is actually pure ECS. So it's data-oriented, pure ECS code. That's why it's so efficient. That's why it's so small and runs so fast. Speaking of speed, Unity claimed that the Tiny runtime could actually render three to four more times as much animated sprites as um, the other leading 2D engines out there that are getting web. So it's quite a big difference. But what's the most impressive to me is actually the fact that uh, the load time for web games is actually gonna be somewhere around 350 MS to 600 MS on device just like the iPhone 6S. Loading up a Unity game in the browser has a very long time. It creates a lot of friction and that's where we lose the most amount of viewers or most amount of player. Um, so being able to cut that down to 350 MS if you have something really, really optimized, is, is going to be something that's quite good for us. So let's go over to screen share and have a look at how we can actually start looking at this preview package. So if you don't have it already, if you don't have Unity 2018.3 or Unity 2019 Alpha, go ahead and open up the Unity Hub or install those version uh, standalone if you want to. In my case, I had to go under Install, then Beta Release, and here I found my Unity 2018.3. So I went ahead, downloaded that, and I created a project. So my project is called small. So go right ahead and open up your project. You'll end up with something clean, something empty, just like I have right now. And once you're ready, head over to the package manager at the top side of here. We're going to look for all the package and make sure we enable preview package. That's very important. It's part of the preview package. If you scroll down all the way, you're gonna find tiny mode, which is down here. You're gonna go ahead and install that after a little while, you'll have the tiny mode package. All right, so this took quite a while, but now we have under our package, the tiny mode, which is down here. Now make sure we open this up. We're going to download the, the, um, the, the samples and they are actually part of the package right here. So if you double click on the Unity package, you're gonna be able to import every single sample that they've put for you um, to look at. So here they are on the left side. I'm going to import every single little thing. All right, so at this point, you should be a little bit confused. You have all these samples, but if you look through them, you're not gonna find any scenes. Well, you, you find this one called entity scene, but that doesn't count. So you don't find any scene object. And uh, you're just wondering, okay, so how should I go and open these up? Well, what you're seeing right now is a um, is basically a kind of preview of the new Unity interfaces if you're working with ECS only. So the way you're actually going to open up a project in this case is you're gonna head at the top you'll realize now that you have this button available to you, go under file and open a project. Inside of your asset folder, you'll be finding all of these demo. Let's go ahead and include the, um, we could do dungeon Z and you'll find the UT project, which stands for Unity Tiny Project. Let's open this one up. Okay, so as you can see here, the hierarchy actually changes a little bit. You're not seeing game object anymore. You're seeing entity and not all of them are actually loaded. Now, if you want to see more of them, you can hit the load button. And uh, in this case, for this very specific project, they're all loaded. So <laughs> game scene contains everything, but it's not the case um, for all the projects. Sometimes you have to go under load and actually find more to load. And you can decide to unload um, entity group on its own. So you can actually remove stuff uh, right from the scene view. Now note that this does not remove it from the game. It just removes it from what you can see inside of the scene. Now, one cool thing I'd like to show you before we dive in a little bit better on how, how actually this flow works and where does it start from is um, the actual way it's being played. So if you click on the play button, you're going to realize that it's compiling something and it's actually pushing it inside of a browser. So let's have a look on my left hand side. It's not showing in the scene view. It's actually showing under my local host. So it created a web server. And to be honest, I don't know what this game is and I don't know if it works. So um, I'm going to go take another example right here, one that I know works. I'm going to head over to Tiny and open up their Flappy Bird clone. So this one was called Flying Yolk. 
Okay, so here we are. Um, as you can see, we can load more things here. So we can load the tutorial, we can load the pipes, we can load every single asset that the game has. Now, it doesn't matter if you load all of these things because at the runtime, it's always the same game. Um, it's when you work though, when you want to move stuff around, you want to set up your scene, then you have the option to load or unload things. So I just kept the bootstrap here in this case. Okay, so back to it again. I'm going to click on the start button. You're going to see it actually builds it inside of WebGL and it starts a web server. What do I mean by start a web server? Well, let's have a look at something right here. Localhost 19050, that's the port. What I can do is first, well, I can play the game, right? It is right here, has quite a loud audio, so we're gonna stop that. Um, but I don't have to leave this running. You're going to realize right here that they have um, the game scene, just display a QR code and it tell you who is active. Now, something very cool with this is that they give you your LAN IP. That's my personal LAN IP on my computer. I'm gonna have to change this after this video. And here is something you guys will like. So since this is on my LAN and my phone is also connected to the same Wi-Fi as my computer right now, um, boop, boop, boop. let me open up my QR code app. I'm using Kaspersky QR code. And I'm just gonna be looking at my QR code. Okay, so it found it, right? And when it finds it, it goes inside of my URL. It inputs the same exact address as you see, just above my URL, basically in my screen, like right here. And then flying yolt running on my phone. It's actually running much better on the phone because it has a proper resolution here. And you're also going to realize that um, my client up here, that's my phone. And as soon as I quit this thing, so I'm gonna kill my application and we're going to realize that this one will have left after a little bit of time. So now, if you've been using ECS lately, you've most likely done it in C Sharp. However, in the tiny project, they're not ready for C Sharp just yet. It's not there just yet, we're still in preview. So what they're using instead is TypeScript. I was about to say it's quite similar. There is a big difference still. Uh, you have to get used to it. They do have a lot of sample you can look at though. So that's gonna help you quite a lot. So if we have a look at the flying mule code, you're going to see that those are all TypeScript scripts. And usually they all start with a bootstrap. And if we have a look at what it says inside of our in inspector at the top there, if we select bootstrap, it says this entity group is a startup entity group. It will be loaded automatically at the start of the game. So everything starts from here, bootstrap. Let's have a look at the uh, different entity. This one isn't, it doesn't give out that message. They're all the same at this point. So it's really important to look at which one is the startup, in which case, uh, as soon as you find it, you know that this entity right here will be the one um, that starts everything. And you can start reading the flow of your game from that point. Now, if you guys remember, we have multiple entity in this project. Here they are. They're all at the top over there. We are going to unload everything but Bootstrap because we know that Bootstrap is the one um, that contains the starting logic. So let me load Bootstrap, make sure this is the only one in there. And from that point on, we know that Bootstrap has a camera has an audio source, has three audio source actually, and that's all it has at the beginning. So we really have to look now at this point, okay, so who is using these component? And that's pretty much all the information we have about this very specific bootstrap. Now, um, if you look at other project, you might have more information, you might actually have settings in there, but this one is all we actually know about. Uh, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, know where the next step is, you have to look inside of the system. So in this case, probably either the game manager system or the game service. It's one of the two, most likely. Let me open up game service and you're going to see you have some functions such as clear, initialize, start tutorial. That's most likely their start point. Um, I invite you to look at it in a different editor. I'm using Visual Studio right now. You could use Visual Code because that, that is TypeScript basically. And it's gonna be much easier for you to uh, use Visual Studio Code, it's gonna format it better basically. That's of course only if you are feeling like jumping in right now, it's still hot, but it's still also TypeScript. Uh, in the future, C Sharp. One more thing I'd like to show you, uh, something that's a little bit hidden as well before we go, is if you head over to the UT project, so the Unity Tiny project and you click on it, you're going to find in your inspector that you have multiple options here. You can do a different kind of build. So debug, dev, release, that would of course change the parameter you get when you build. Um, then you have the module, you, you can disable everything you don't need. So the package you get at the end is even smaller than that. So 
assuming we don't want to be doing hitbox we could really we could actually just remove that and it would make the build even more small which is quite cool um yeah i think this one is pretty optimized though and then they have configuration and those are actually defined by you so if we have a look over here uh skin config is actually something you can see under the component folder and those are the value you're also going to see in the flying yolk uh project so skin config over here um, so this is kind of your settings in this case. Speaking of settings, if we head over to preference, you're going to be able to change the tiny preference. So when you're working with the tiny editor, you can change your, um, your IDE. So as I mentioned earlier, we should change ours to code. So let's go ahead and change mine as well. I'm going to open up my code location and it's under app data. Okay. That's why I didn't find it. Here's mine. So I'm changing my ID to code because I know I'm going to have to deal with TypeScript for a little bit. So we're going to be using our web editor in this case. Now that's for the ID. I got one more thing to show you under project settings. So edit project settings. We now have the tiny collapsible menu over here. And you'll find a couple of things you can play around with, uh, especially the port in which I will be changing mine. Um, but that's, that's the port that actually runs on your LAN network and you can connect with your phone in this case. Um, you can also change the size. I don't exactly remember where it was in here at one point. Okay, instead of having auto resize canvas, you can actually define the size over here of your game. And something that's also cool is that you can see what's actually being included inside of your build um, if you have a look on the assets over here. So I thought that was quite interesting and I'm quite excited to start working on this. I really want to publish some games directly on Facebook Messenger. Uh, hopefully that gets supported quite soon, but that's their goal. So I'm not scared that it's going to happen um, quite soon. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I am quite eager to jump into this. So I'll leave you here. Please let me know exactly what you intend on doing with this or if you want to wait for C Sharp instead. Um, yeah, have fun learning ECS. It's quite something, but once you get the hang of it, you can create some quite interesting stuff, very, very low cost. Catch you guys later. I'll see you on Discord. Yeah, I'll see you on Discord. Cheers.